Okay, do you hear me? No. I'm going to talk about around, around optimal secure multiplier computation without setup. And in our setting, the adversary is going to be polynomially bounded, malicious, and static. The main question we're going to address in this talk is whether we can construct around optimal MPC protocols, uh, but what are the rules of the game? First, we don't want to assume any trusted setup. We want to accommodate malicious adversaries, and also we want to build protocols understand the polynomial time assumptions. But what is the optimal round complexity? Uh, Gargatol uh, gave uh, the lower bound of four rounds restricted to black box simulation. And that said, we're gonna ask the question if we can construct four round uh, MPC protocols under all these conditions. The first work in this space achieved round optimal complexity that grows with the depth of the evaluated circuit. Uh, then the work of Beaver et al. introduced the first constant round protocols uh, for the restricted setting of honest majority. Uh, then we had the first constant round protocols in the dishonest majority setting. Uh, and uh, very recently, we also had like the first six round protocols. And also Gargat also that the lower bound is four. Um, and we also have five round protocols and four round protocols. So there's a catch. So these four round protocols are not based on polynomial time assumptions. And in this talk, uh, we're going to construct the first uh, four round MPC protocol under all these conditions. Here are our results. Assuming injective one-way functions, zaps, which are two round witness indistinguishable proofs, and additive homomorphic encryption, we construct four round malicious MPC protocols, and we can instantiate uh, all these primitives from enhanced trap permutations and LWE or QR or DDH or DCR, or from the single assumption of QR. Uh, our work does not stand alone in the space. There's also the concurrent work that you just saw. And there, uh, they assume injective one-way functions, then script systems and two round OT, and then can instantiate all these primitives from QR, DDH, DCR, and LWE. So a common paradigm that we use to achieve malicious security is the GMW paradigm. So in this paradigm, we start with a weak variant of an MPC protocol, like a semi-malicious protocol. And then we use zero knowledge to lift this protocol to malicious security. So there are works that they follow this approach and they use the four round non-malleable zero knowledge proof to achieve that. So they built four round protocols and then they saw that it's enough to prove correctness of the third and the fourth round um, of their protocol. So they plug in uh, a four round uh, zero knowledge to prove the correctness of the third round and a four round ZK to prove the correctness of the fourth round. And even if we have a two round protocol, again, we need to prove the correctness of the first and the second round, so we again have a four round protocol. So can we do better than that? So there are works that in fact, they replaced the, the four round uh, zero knowledge proofs with three round zero knowledge proofs. And then they end up with uh, four round protocols if we have a three round zero knowledge. But the price they pay to reduce from four rounds to three rounds uh, is complex leveraging, and then the protocol only assumes uh, sub-exponential assumptions. And in fact, we cannot build a three-round zero-knowledge proof like with black box simulation. So in our approach, we're going to replace the zero-knowledge proofs with the weaker tool of witness indistinguishable proofs. And even if we use this weaker tool of witness indistinguishable proofs that provide the weaker correctness guarantees, Nothing is lost as long as we build the final protocol where we give the same level of security as the zero knowledge uh, proof offered. This brings me to our approach. So we we'll build a four round semi malicious MPC protocol. And then they, we use three round uh, WI uh, proofs to prove correctness of our third round. And that will bring us to a four round protocol. Uh, so following this philosophy of replacing the zero knowledge proofs with WI proofs, uh, there were many obstacles that arise and we used one technique after the other to uh, overcome these difficulties. And here is like a one minute elevator pitch uh, for our approach. Suppose I'm in an elevator with Moti and Jesper. 
So we first built a same MLU, same PC protocol. And to prove the correctness of this protocol, we don't use zero knowledge. We use WI proofs. And to do that, we use the time-tested approach of Naur Jung paradigm. For those of you that you are familiar, I think Moti is familiar with it. Uh, but uh, doing that, we need to weaken the NP statement of the WI proofs. And to do that, like the adversary is free to launch some more attacks. And in fact, he can uh, launch some additive uh, attacks in the protocol. And we build some new technology to avoid these additive attacks. And finally, we build uh, non-malleable, uh, with this indistinguishable proofs from polynomial time assumptions, which was not known before. So in, in the next couple of slides, I'm going like, to give you, give you only the key insights of these puzzle pieces. So it's known that secure computation of some function reduces the secure computation of some randomized encoding. To achieve a four-run protocol, we need a randomized encoding of degree three, because a randomized degree three uh, encoding uh, can be expressed as the sum of uh, degree three terms. And for that, we can use a three-bit multiplication protocol based on two-round OT, which was recently constructed fr from Anand et al. And what we're going to do, so to compute our function f, we're going to securely evaluate these three MALT protocols. Uh, and we compute the sum of them at, in the fourth round. So this is going to be our base protocol in a high level. Then to make this protocol uh, secure against malicious adversaries, we're going to replace the WI with zero knowledge proofs. So the power that we have with the zero knowledge proofs is that there's a trapdoor that the simulator knows. And he can use the trapdoor to remove the honest uh, inputs of the parties in the simulation. But with WI proofs, like the simulator has to follow the honest strategy. He doesn't have any trapdoor. So to use WI proofs, we're going to use the Naur-Yang paradigm, which says the following. Like, if you encrypt something twice, then you prove uh, correctness only on one of the two encryptions. And here, we're going to do something similar. We're going to repeat its protocol twice and prove correctness only of one of the two protocols. But you know, life is not simple. This doesn't quite work, because the adversary can inject some errors in this uh, double uh, three multiplication protocols. And we need to uh, cope with these uh, uh, errors here. So this is the, our approach in a high level. And in the next few minutes I left, uh, I'm going to like, so you like how these three puzzle pieces are connected to each other. So as I said, we're using this uh, nice three round, three bit multiplication protocol, which involves three parties. They give inputs x1, x2, and x3. And to construct the protocol, we use three instances of an oblivious transfer protocol uh, to get the result, which is x1 times x2 times x3. Okay, for, for this talk, it's not important how the protocol works. It's not required. So now, since we want to incorporate the naur Young paradigm, what we're going to do, we're going to like, run each OT twice. So we're going to have like six OTs now, instead of three. But as I said before, life is not simple. Like, we cannot uh, uh, do this while uh, achieving correctness, and also the privacy. And the adversary can inject some errors, because to achieve the security of this protocol, we need to weaken the NP statement further. And that's why the adversary is able to introduce some error here. So what do we really want? We want a randomized encoding, which is secure against these additive attacks. So it would have been nice if we could uh, apply these uh, compilers from uh, Genkin et al. So these compilers, they're very nice because they can convert the protocol to like uh, a protocol which is secure against additive attacks. It's a generic compiler that we can use. But unfortunately, these compilers are not round preserving. So if we apply these compilers on our previous protocol, then we're, going, we're not going to have four rounds. The round complexity will explode. So what we're going to do instead we're going to pick a specific randomized encoding. We're using the BMR encoding. And we're going to show that any additive attack on that protocol 
corresponds to an additive attack on the underlying circuit that we are computing. What is the underlying circuit? I mean that if this is the circuit of the function that we want to securely evaluate, I call it C, and if C prime is the, the secure version of the circuit, what we do, we prove that any attack reduces to an additive attack on the underlying circuit C. So what did we achieve with that? Like, why is this fine? Because now we can apply the compilers of Genginaton on the original circuit C. Okay, so what the compilers do, like they take the circuit and they transform it to a circuit which is secure against these additive attacks. So we do this, we pre-compile our circuit with these uh, compilers, and then we apply the randomized encoding. Okay, so in that way, we achieve uh, the round complexity that we want. And the high, like, uh, actually the take home message here is that we can, in fact, build a randomized encoding which is secure against additive attacks and maybe it can find some other applications. Yeah. So to conclude, we have the first uh, round optimal uh, MPC protocol without setup in the presence of malicious adversaries under standard polynomial time assumptions. And these are the instantiations of our protocols. And there are many open problems, but I'll leave you with uh, one main open problem, is like to build a four-round malicious protocol actually from like minimal assumptions, like four-round malicious OT. And with that, I will end the talk. Thank you.